you so much. Today we are talking about the oldest profession in the world. No, we're not talking about that. It's not that kind of show. I wonder what you're thinking. We're talking about motherhood. Yay! I like that. All you need to do is look around. Many people in this audience have that glow, if you know what I mean. Now, there are a few experiences in life, I think, that compare to becoming a mom for the very first time, the second time, no matter when it happens. It is fabulous. From the moment that you realize that there is another being growing inside of you, you go, hey, we did that. Even to the throwing up every morning, as some people do. When I went through it, even I thought that was cool. Shows you how much I know. Your waistline grows and grows and grows to feeling that very first kick it is really a thrill. And here is some, a lot of people going, yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> and here's someone who knows that feeling all too well for the second time around from One Life to Live and now on Guiding Light. Please give a very warm welcome to the very pregnant, Miss Fiona Hutchison. <laughs> Listen, Fiona's joined by her son, Hutch, because he's sitting in the front row with Dad, and the minute yeah. he saw Mom, you know what happens when they see Mom. They They're do like, come Mom's running. Here. Mom's here. Welcome to you both to the show. Thank you. Because you look so good. You really do. You, oh, doesn't she you. look good? having a doctor right here yeah, because I mean, it's only four more weeks to go. To be four weeks away. And she was talking about, this is my baby. Can you show them the baby dance that you were doing backstage? Oh, yes. Hutch, how Hutch do let do, mommy show the baby dance. baby dance? Put the belly and you just go, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. wiggle. <laughs> That's Fiona's little baby dance. I never looked like that in my eighth month. They were calling me Shamu, but you look absolutely <laughs> fabulous. Do you like being pregnant? Because I liked it so much. Do I, you? I, I do, but, but I prefer I but. this, I think, more. I prefer it when there's when there's a bundle you can hold and play with and talk to, and I think so. Do you know if you're having a boy or girl this time? We're having another boy. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, Dr. David, you've been OBGYN for 20... You're in the Boston area, are you right. not? That's what I thought. And so the question is, there's always new stuff coming on the market all the time. When I was, when I was pregnant, I thought all this stuff was neat. Now, I, 1998, I'm thinking, there is a whole lot of neat stuff uh, out big here. Big difference, It's always yeah. changing. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the latest, do you think? Oh, Gail, there's all kinds of things that come out. This, this thing you all get a kick out of. You really like this. You know how they say you should talk to your baby before yes. the baby's born? Yes. At about 24 to 26 weeks gestation, you can act, babies can actually hear. That's what I say. 24 you, to 26 weeks? Yes, the they beginning of the third trimester. So you can put your mouth up and start talking so and hear he's daddy's voice. He's right hearing right. everything uh, and he's, he's recording hearing it. Us now. Do you know what his name's going to be? Well, we're, we're, we're toying with the name of Trevor. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. Okay, so Trevor can hear us. All right. Trevor can hear us. You can entertain that one, too. Yeah. This thing is really neat. It, this was actually developed by an obstetrician, and it's an apron. It looks bizarre, yeah, but the woman does. can wear it <laughs> around them. And you can hook this up to either a CD or a tape recorder, play music, and it actually helps lull a baby to sleep. You know, most women say that the baby's um, up all night. They can't get to sleep because the baby's kicking. It's because yeah. during the day, it's a rocking motion when the woman's hold walking it, around. Uh, hold it up so we can get Maybe a better look Maybe daddy could wear it and, you know, just <laughs> that would really walk be around mommy a little bit. So they wear oh, this. Oh, I see. So it's like an apron. Here, yeah. let me see, Dave. And, hold it up. and the thing about this thing is... So we hold it up like this. Are you going to wear it, Gail? Don't want okay. me to put it on? <laughs> oh, no, there you go. That, okay. That's it. Just imagine I had something. <laughs> and you can cook in it, too. <laughs> and what okay, this, so then you're putting that there. And what this Got does it. is these little pockets here, excuse yes. me, yeah, no, these please. little pockets here, uh, you can put the speakers in, and you can put whatever kind of music. If you want to lull the baby to sleep, like during the night, uh -huh. you can put soothing music in. If you want to just kind of wake them up, you can play jazz. They've actually shown that the babies have certain movements and changes in heart rate with certain types of music. What, and, what music do babies like the best? It really all depends. It, it really depends what kind of mood they're in, just like us. But at night, they really do like soothing music. Do they? And, and when they, you play loud music, or not loud, but just uh, real uppity music, they really bounce around a lot, and they love it. In fact, when we're trying yeah. to do certain tests on the baby to see if they're, they're healthy by looking at their heart rate, what we call non-stress tests, uh -huh. sometimes we do acoustic stimulation where we make certain high sounds to actually get the babies to move, and it works beautifully. There are lots of women in the audience that have questions. you want to start us off, April? 
How are you today? How are you doing, April? Good, thank you. Uh, this is my first child, so I'm a little nervous, thank you, about uh, the pain that I'm going to be receiving oh, during question. labor. Right. And I know a lot of the things that they have out there, such as epidurals, and but what would be the safest to use? Well, you know, epidurals uh, really are safe, April. When, when I was uh, first started practicing obstetrics, you know, you'd walk down labor and delivery suites, and it was like, you know, screaming, and just absolutely, it was like being in an institution. And I'll tell you, it's, it's true. Yes. It's really changed. Epidurals, yeah. you almost feel guilty that if it's given and given properly, you really don't feel anything. You're still able to push. You, you shouldn't you know, feel, Women play cards in labor. Don't you encourage them not to feel guilty, because I didn't take anything, oh, yeah. April. And then by the time I said, you know, Doc, I'll have a little something now. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the zero oh, stuff. Yeah, it was too late. Martyr. It was oh, too I late. Did you, you have an epidural? I had an epidural, but, yes, um, you know, my situation was I had a a very long pushing period. I mean, yeah. four hours of pushing. So oh. the epidural had worn off by the time my, yeah. you know, the four hours was natural. And so right. you got to feel. So I got the full uh, whack there. The oh, poor thing. <laughs> no long. Those days have passed. Yes. Do you always rack your brains for that perfect baby gift? Well, we will end that dilemma today. Coming up next, we're going to show you the newest, the hottest, the absolute best baby bargains for 1998. We'll be right back. It's called the piggyback stroller, and I'm going to put it on Fiona oh, okay. so you can great. feel how light it is. It weighs four pounds. Oh, yeah, that's nothing. Four pounds. Nothing. But the great thing is when you do get tired of carrying Hutch or, or Trevor around, yeah. Yeah. you <laughs> can turn it oh. into a stroller. Oh. Let me take it around. It's risky time. Good morning, world. Okay, boys, time to rock and roll. <laughs> so what you in for, kid? Now this is a crime. Meow. Fashion felony. <laughs> 